Colonel Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders. So obviously when you're dealing with tarantulas, you're dealing with essentially giant spiders. So for folks who get into the hobby, usually the thing that attracts them first are the large ones. The ones that are five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten inches. Those are the ones that tend to get people excited and that people go out and try to find right off the bat. And unfortunately what we do is we end up overlooking some of the more diminutive, but no less cool, smaller species. I know I'm guilty of this myself. I've done a ton of videos on the fastest growing, the largest, the biggest ones in my collection and I've never done anything featuring some of the smaller ones and I have obviously some small tarantulas that are favorites of mine. So what we're going to try to do today is take a look at all of the smaller tarantulas that I've kept over the course of the years. There's not a whole heck of a lot of them so far only because when I first got into the hobby, much like many other hobbyists, I was concerned with getting the biggest ones out there. So I immediately noticed the Goliath bird eater or the Theraphosis sturmy, wanted that, realized it wasn't ready, picked up an LP, got into Formictopus, Pampabedia, Circle, Pelma, all these giant species, and I kind of neglected the little ones. But after time went by and I kept a couple of these small ones and fell in love with them, I realized there's more out there than just giant spiders. And for those of you out there that are thinking, yeah, but the idea of getting tarantulas to get a giant spider, it seems to be kind of a waste to get a smaller one. I get it. I've been there. But luckily, now that I've spent some time in the hobby, I realize just how cool they really are. So before we get going on this, I do want to define some terminology, or at least my definition of some terminology that we're going to be using. One word to get thrown out quite a bit is the word dwarf. We tend to apply that to any tarantula that isn't a huge huge tarantula. And uh, for me, I see it this way. Any spider that is four inches or 10.16 centimeters, that is a small tarantula, not necessarily a dwarf, a smaller tarantula. And for true dwarfs, I always look for spiders that are three inches or 7.62 centimeters or smaller. There are some really teeny tiny tarantulas out there. So I consider anything under three inches to be a dwarf. But for the sake of this here video, what we're going to do is we're just going to talk about the small ones, and I'll mention ones that I think personally are true dwarfs. So as for the rest of you, if you want to debate what you think a dwarf's tarantula is, feel free. It's not something I think is worth arguing. I think we kind of have a thing in the hobby where everybody's idea of what makes a giant, a large, a medium, a small, or a dwarf tarantula may differ. In the grand scheme of things, it really doesn't matter. They're just awesome spiders. So enough of me talking. Let's take a look at Tom's Little Spiders or the smaller dwarf or small species I keep in my collection. All right, so let's kick this one off with the first dwarf species I ever kept. This is Homeoma chilensi or the Chilean flame. These guys get to be about three and three quarters inches or 9.5 centimeters, so definitely a smaller species. They are super docile and inquisitive, and the majority of folks that have kept them, especially the adults, have reported that they're just like this one here. They will roam around. They will climb out of their enclosures. They will investigate, which makes them adorable. Now, unfortunately, I picked these guys up way back, probably about 12, 13 years ago when there were a lot of adult females in the pet trade. Sadly, what was happening is folks were going into Chile, capturing the adult females, selling them into the pet trade, and they were like a dime a dozen. You were talking about $40 for an adult female, which is insane. Luckily, Chile stopped that. They closed their borders off to exportation, and now the ones we get in the hobby are usually captive bred slings, which is awesome, except for the fact those captive bred slings start off very, very tiny and tend to grow rather slowly. So heads up, if you're checking this one out here and you rush to buy slings, they're going to start small. They're going to take a while before they look like this beauty here. But I absolutely love these spiders. This female here just passed about a year and a half or so ago, which was devastating because that was the last one I had. Who knows how old she was because I had her for about 10 years and then you figure that she was full grown when I got her. They take forever to grow. She could have easily have been 30 years old. We'll never know, unfortunately, but I absolutely love that spider. It was the first spider I ever handled. I'm not big into handling, but back when I first got into the hobby, I was arachnophobic, and I really wanted to prove to myself I was over it, and this young lady curled, like, crawled, basically crawled right up in my hand, sat there. It was adorable. I highly recommend this species for anybody looking for a docile tarantula. And next up, we have Hapalopus formosus, or Hapalopus species Columbia large, or the pumpkin patch. This species gets to be about three and a half inches or nine centimeters. I've had males that are right around the two inch or two and a quarter inch mark. Very small spider, but boy, do they pack a lot of personality into that small stature. I got my first slings several years ago. I ended up with one male and two big females. One of the big females was named B. Arthur, and that was the first female spider or tarantula that I successfully paired. And this is her daughter here, who does not have a name yet. But these are awesome species. First off, the slings start off 
off with their adult coloration. They're very, very tiny, but they do have those adult colors. And there aren't many slings that do that. They grow rather quickly overall. I think most of us report having fast-growing specimens. I had a friend that had a male mature in under 10 months, which is unbelievable. I've had males mature in right around the one-year or 14-month mark. Females take a little longer than that. And, of course, because females keep growing their entire lives, they keep putting on size. B. Arthur, probably when she passed away, was around the three and three-quarter inch mark. She was a big, big girl and quite large for a Hapalopus formosus. Now, these guys can be rather skittish. It took me quite a few tries to get this girl out in the open. As slings, people report that they're little escape artists. So when most spiders get disturbed, they will bolt into their burrows or they will bolt into their webbing, and this species will do both. A lot of folks have reported that their little slings will actually bolt out of the burrows and out of the webbings and out of the enclosure. So just keep that in mind. I haven't had much problems with them. I've raised several. Obviously, when B. Arthur had her babies, we had many of them, and they were very, very easy to deal with. But an awesome spider. Look at I had to get some shots of that big booty putting the webbing down. Just fantastic. And here we have a true dwarf in Neoholotheli Inse, or the Trinidad Olive. These guys only get to be about 3 inches or 7.62 centimeters. The males can mature out at around 2 inches or so. I originally bought three unsexed juveniles about 9 years ago. All three of them turned out to be male. I then got five specimens from a friend of mine to keep in a communal setup because this is one of those species that folks have had success keeping communally. And unfortunately, one of them ended up passing away. The other four, all male. This is finally one that I picked up last summer that is a female. So finally got a girl. And boy, am I excited for it because it's a beautiful spider. You can see the copious amounts of webbing. These guys web the snot out of their enclosures. They'll often have multiple entrances and exits. Sometimes when I feed them, I don't don't know which exit or entrance they're going to come out of. Like here, I wasn't sure if it was coming out that back corner or that corner down there. But awesome little spiders. As I said before, some folks have kept them communally. It sounds like the folks that have success are ones that have an egg sac, leave it with mom, let them hatch, and just let all the babies stay there. And what they usually report is there is some cannibalism early on, but then things level off and you'll have a happy communal. Most people don't try that though. So a lot of people have mixed results when doing a communal with them. But Love this little girl here. Glad I could finally catch her out hunting. And awesome little dwarf species. Next up, we have the Lycotheli diamantinensis, or the Brazilian blue dwarf beauty. Females of this species get to be about three and a half inches or nine centimeters. These guys are often compared to the GBB and called the mini GBB, but don't call mini GBBs because people that love the species get very upset with that because some will say that this species is actually more beautiful than the GBB. You can see the colors here, super vibrant, those aqua colors on the femurs, the red abdomen, the greenish carapace, just a wonderful, wonderful spider. Now, these guys are very hardy, fast growing, which is awesome for folks who are just starting out with slings, but but you do need to be warned that slings are super fast. When I got my first batch of three slings several years ago, I was floored by how quickly they could boogie. Usually what they'll do though, especially once they get settled in, is they will web and if they're disturbed, they will retreat down into their webbing. The one that we have here is an older female I had that passed away. The one that I have now, unfortunately, was so shy I could not get any footage of her. And then one day she was out and like a doofus, I took some pictures of her to put on Instagram and didn't record any footage of her even I could have gotten good feeding footage, so that's on me. But she's looking pretty much exactly like this one here. Now, as adults, I found that mine are quite shy, will hide in the webbing. I've spoken to other folks that say theirs are more laid back and, shall I say, docile. I have never seen one kick hairs at all, which is a good thing. And I will say that once they put on some size, although they tended to hide when I disturbed them too much, I would often catch them out in the open like this one here. This girl, I opened up her enclosure, went to feed her and she just sat there and posed for me for a while, which is a good thing because again, I wasn't able to get footage of my current one. But awesome species, especially folks that want those beautiful new world tarantulas and love those bright blue colors. 
And here we have my Crypsodromus species Panama or Crypsodromus species Costa Rica, the black Amelia. It's been called and sold as both things. These guys, supposedly the females get to be about three inches or 7.62 centimeters, which would make it a dwarf species. When I first picked this one up several years ago as a tiny sling, I knew nothing about her. I was in a period where I was trying to grab some unique animals that maybe would become more popular. I figure worst case scenario, I raise them up. I have a cool spider. Best case scenario is something I put out there and say, hey, folks, you need to check these guys out. And this would be one that I think folks need to check out. I love the coloration of her. She does do some burrowing. She does appreciate some moisture. This is one of the species that I've noticed that if it dries out a bit, she'd be around her water dish. However, very easy to raise up. They, she ate great. She grew Fairly, I'd say at a medium rate, uh, rate overall, and she's always out in the open. I have no problem getting footage of her. I will be completely honest here. I was going to recycle some footage I had used of her in an early video, and I went, you know what? Let me see what she's up to. Took out her enclosure, dropped in a roach, and there she was just sitting there posing for me, which is why I like her so much. She's so darn pretty. And I've mentioned before that I have a thing for the spiders that are more, shall we say, inquisitive. The ones that when you open the enclosures will actually come out of their dens to investigate, and she always does that. And I know this isn't the case, but to me, it just makes them seem more intelligent. I can't say enough about this spider. Sadly, I don't see them offered all that often, but if you do see them, I would definitely encourage you to pick them up. doesn't take them long to start putting on those adult colors, and they're just cool spiders overall, especially for people that like the smaller spiders. Next up is Sued Hapalopus Species Blue, the Colombian Blue Bottle, or the blue dwarf. And why is it called a dwarf? Well, supposedly females only get to be about three and a half inches or nine centimeters. I have two females, including the one here, and both of them are around the three and a half inch mark. As a matter of fact, one of mine just molted and her molt was around three and a quarter inches. So I'm guessing she's around 3.5 inches or so. But I picked two a third of an inch slings up back in 2017. It took them a little while to grow. They ate okay, but it took them a little while to put on size. But once they hit around an inch or so, they tend to put on size much more quickly. They are both now around three and a half inches. They're still shy, and this is a little bit of a skittish species. I've found that sometimes they will come out of the enclosure if you're not careful. When I open it up, they'll come out to investigate and sometimes curl themselves around the lip like, hey, what's out here? But I have noticed that I recently rehoused my other female into an eight by eight by seven barbarous growth cube enclosure, and I gave her several inches of substrate and the first thing she did was go into her starter burrow and filled it all in and dug herself a nice little burrow there and she, like I said she molted she's now out and about but she's kept her burrow and she goes and hides in her burrow so this is a species that would appreciate some substrate depth so it could do a little bit of burrowing but these guys are highly sought after because of those metallic blue slash purple booties sometimes they look blue sometimes they look purple I try to get a nice close of the up of the, in a minute so you could see it but they they really do pop under the right lighting. It's really just this brilliant metallic coloration. Whether it's blue or purple, who cares? They're gorgeous spiders. And against that overall gray tone of their body, just a stunning species. And next up, we have another true dwarf, the Katamiri Parvum, or... Uruguayan copper dwarf. The females of the species only get to be about three inches. I've had several males. They only get to be about two inches or so. So this is a true dwarf species. And unfortunately, this is older footage of an adult female I had. This is from about 2019 or so. She died about a year later, which still has me bummed out. But the first two that I raised up, unfortunately, were males and they matured at around two and a quarter to 2.5 inches or so. So six point. 0.35 centimeters, so very small, but this was always been or had always been a good eating and faster growing species. I got this adult female seen here when she was right around three inches, so she was probably full grown at this point. They did appreciate some room to burrow, and it was a fossorial species, but I found that mine were out and about quite a bit. So obviously the two males were out and about looking for a lady, and as you can see with the lady here, she was always kind of out exploring, doing a little webbing, checking 
checking things out, but you also had an extensive burrow, so it was cool because I got to see both activities. Now, as far as coloration, you can see there, and I'm glad I was able to get some footage that kind of showed it, she's kind of got a bronze, brownish coloration. If you see there, it's more metallic bronze, but very cool spider. I know folks aren't a fan always of the quote-unquote brown spiders, but trust me when I tell you this footage doesn't do her justice. She was adorable, and I do need to get another female in my collection because sometimes you get a species and it's a one and done. This is one that I really need to get a female at some point. I had somebody that offered one to me a little while back and things fell through, unfortunately. So fingers crossed I'll get one in the future. And finally, we have the last New World species I have on this list, the Cochiana brunapes or dwarf pink leg. The supposedly, females only get to be about two and a half inches or 6.35 centimeters. My male was around an inch and a half, and that's what you're seeing here, or 3.8 centimeters. And unfortunately, I have just about zero footage of this guy. I had it in this dram vial here for a while. He outgrew the dram vial, so I put him into a 20 ounce deli cup. I didn't record it at the time because I assumed I'd be recording the next rehousing, and then it ended up being a mature male. So unfortunately, I had very little in terms of footage of this one, which is a shame because I picked it up specifically to do a husbandry video on it. But I love this little guy. It grew very, very quickly. It has a very unique look with a darker body and those quote-unquote pink legs. And this is a species that I definitely need to get another one of because, again, I really, really wanted a female to do a husbandry video on. And unfortunately, by the time I got around to doing a husbandry video on this guy, he had already passed away. Now, for the first Old World species on this list, we have Sednocnemus brachyramosa, or the Malaysian blue femur. Supposedly, females get to be 3 to 4 inches, or 7.62 to 10.16 centimeters. I picked up my first brachyramosa several years ago, and it matured male, but unfortunately, during that molt where it matured as a male, I had dropped a cricket in to feed it. The cricket went down the hole. It hadn't closed off its hole to molt. And I came back the next day to find the spider on top, missing some legs, and the cricket killed it. So a warning to be careful when you drop feeders in for a molting spider because they can injure and kill it. But anyway, I got two more slings from my friend Aaron Cashel last year, and they are doing wonderfully. You can see one of them here does not seem to notice that roach over there in the side, but we'll get some hunting video of my other one in a moment. They are growing fairly quickly overall. Right now, I'm guessing they're right around about an inch and a half, maybe an inch and three quarters or so. They do not have any of that blue. This species is known for having a wonderful blue sheen under a light. I'm hoping I get a female out of it because my male, I didn't get a chance to see if he had the blue because unfortunately he was killed so quickly after the molt. But I do want to see a nice blue female. And here we go. We're going to feed one of my females here. This one's actually going to do some hunting for us. And you can see how quickly they move. There she is. She knows the roach is there. And let's see. Wait for it. Wait for it. Woo. And she's got it. Awesome little spiders. And here we have my Heterotheli villicella female or Tanzanian chestnut. This is a true dwarf species with females reaching only two and a half or 6.35 centimeters. The first H. villicella I had years ago, unfortunately, I think I kept it a little too dry and it ended up becoming impacted and died. The second, I ended up growing up to a mature male and it was one of the smallest mature males I have ever seen. I was shocked when I shined the flashlight in and saw that it had its emboli at the end of its pedipalps. That mature male was around an inch and a half or 3.81 centimeters, so a truly tiny little male. Now, these guys are very, very small and shy. Most of them do a great deal of webbing. They're a heavily webbing species. And it's one of the species that has been witnessed living communally, and folks have had a lot of success keeping communally. Now, I have not tried this myself. I think my communal phase is done. I'm going to stop with the successful M. Balfouri because other species I had, there was some always some conflict. But something to consider with these guys. I have seen video and photos of a bunch of them living together, and it truly is adorable. Now, this is, as I said before, a rather shy species. Many folks report that theirs are not particularly reactive when the keepers open up the enclosure. As a matter of fact, their go-to is either to run and hide in their burrows or run and hide in their webbing, which can make them a good starter old world species. I just completed a video on old world tarantula 
substantial is, and this is one that constantly gets thrown out there as a good species for someone to start with that is looking to get into old world tarantulas. And from what I've witnessed from the three of mine, I would have to wholeheartedly agree. Now, you can see with the girl here, this is after a recent rehousing, and this is basically all the footage we have of her because she has been rather elusive. I did get some feeding fi uh, footage of her a little while back, but when I loaded up, she came out, grabbed the cricket so quickly, I didn't have a chance to adjust, so it was too blurry, so I didn't include it here. But here we'll just get to see her big, swollen bum. She actually just molted again. I'm hoping she'll throw out her molt. I noticed that she closed up her burrow shortly after I put her in here because you can see she's quite big, and then opened it back up, and I fed her, but I've yet to see the molt. I'd really like to measure that molt because she's a tiny little girl, but so glad to finally have a female of this species. As I mentioned before, there's some that you keep that are kind of a one and done. There's some that you keep that you're like, you know what? I need a female in my collection that's going to be with me for quite some time. So H. villicella, definitely one of the first dwarf tarantula species I have ever kept and one that I plan to have in my collection for many, many years to come. And here we have Catapelma olivaceum, or the black furry, or the Middle Eastern gold. I believe this is the black furry variety here, as evidenced by the fact that she's black and her brother was black. But anyway, these guys get to be about 4 inches, or 10.16 centimeters or so, so a smaller tarantula. I actually had no idea they were smaller, and I've heard of folks that had mature females that were even smaller than that. But it's totally cool with me, because I absolutely adore this spider. I saw this species the first time on a channel called world of spiders where they showed a bunch of them living in close proximity to each other in crypts they were feeding off of look like millipedes it was just amazing to see so since then i knew i needed some so i picked up two several years ago unfortunately the first one ended up maturing male he was right around three inches or so and this girl here is right around the three inch mark so i'll look forward to her putting on some size but we just rehoused her recently and so this is kind of an update to that and i was expecting a lot more webbing a lot more secrecy because these guys did do some burrowing and webbing early on as slings and as juveniles, but she's sitting right out in the open. She had, if you can see there, there's a little burrow that she kind of made, but she's never in it. Most of the time when I open up the enclosure, she's either sitting right up top here or on the side of it. But I'm happy with it because it allows me to get to see her more. Now, as I said before, there is a golden variety and there is a black variety. I've had mixed re uh, responses as to which version is found in which location. This one here, once she hit around two inches or so, darkened up quite a bit. Before that, I wasn't sure. It looked like there could have been some gold in there. And again, as I said, her brother was black. But awesome little spider. Now, I've heard from folks that live where these guys are uh, live naturally, and they've said that when when encountered out either in the home or in the wild, they can be quite nasty. They're talking about threat postures, throwing up those fangs and as to dissuade any predation from anything that might be around them. But I found that mine have been pretty laid back overall. So I guess the trick is to just give them some room. She does have a pretty good size enclosure here compared to the size of her. Honestly, when I went to rehouse her, I thought she was going to be a bit bigger. So we gave her a little bit larger enclosure, but she's been fine. I've had no threat postures from her, no defensive behavior whatsoever. That's not to say, however, that if you get the species, you might not encounter some of that, because remember, the temperament can always vary from specimen to specimen. And here we have one of the coolest little tarantulas ever, the Idiotheli Mira, or Blue Foot Baboon. These guys only get to be about 3 to 4 inches or 7.62 to 10.16 centimeters. This is a very shy spider, one that likes to burrow. And I originally got it because of the little blue feet, which it likes to leave hanging out. Well, something that I discovered after keeping these guys for a little while is they have an amazing hunting technique because this is actually one of the only trapdoor hunting tarantulas out there. Here's some footage of mine grabbing a prey item and sucking it back into its trapdoor. The first time I saw mine trapdoor, door hunt I just couldn't believe it I had no idea somehow that they actually trap door hunted here's another shot of this one trap door hunting you'll see it kind of move ahead of time so you'll see where the trap door is it's going to reach out grab it and pull it right back in absolutely adorable spiders the nice thing is you will catch them out and about at nighttime which is cool because they are such pretty little spiders now my girl here when we rehouse her was probably right around the three inch mark or so they tend to be slow growing so it takes them a little while to put on size but my gosh all all you have to do is see that trapdoor hunting action once and it makes it all worth it.
Now, another thing about these guys is that they do make good starter old world species. Again, I just finished my old world video and I did a video on the best starter old world species. Imira, definitely a good one to start off with for folks who want to move into old worlds. And here we have my Flogielis John Ray Lazoy or Palawan Blue. I had to have this one because A, it had some blue in it, and I love Filipino species. This one gets to be about 3 inches or 7.62 centimeters. Unfortunately, the one you see here ended up being a male. It matured out, and it was one of the most shy specimens I've ever kept. So you're going to see the footage repeat here because this is all the footage I have of him. Unfortunately, even when he matured, he stayed in his burrow most of the time, and I didn't get any good footage of him until after he passed. So I definitely need to try out another one of these because that was my second mature male of the species. I need to get a beautiful blue female. But definitely a fossorial species. They like some moisture. They ate great. They grew quickly. I just wish it had been a lady so I could show you a nice big beautiful lady here. So definitely very cool little dwarf species. One that I will definitely buy another one of and try to get a female. And for folks who like the Filipino species, I mean, you have to get this one, don't you? So P. John Ray Lazoy, Palawan Blue, amazing little spider and definitely one to check out. And finally, we have my E. Pachypus or Stout Leg Baboon. I absolutely love these two girls. And yes, for the people out there who are going to go, you're showing these off again. Yes, I am. I'm going to show them off as much as I can because unfortunately, I'm afraid they're getting old and I might not have them for all that much longer. Sadly, I picked these guys up in 2012. There was a sling and a juvenile. And at that point, I figured, oh, I'll grow them up. Maybe I'll pair them. Well, I've yet to see males offered. I haven't seen any or almost any slings offered in the U.S. since then. Now, this can be considered a dwarf species because both of mine are definitely full grown and they're right around the four inch or 10.16 centimeter mark. So it's a smaller spider and they're adorable. Just look at those thick beefy back legs. They're a burrowing species. They like to do vertical burrows. You can see there's two entrances or exits there, whichever you prefer, and they will burst out of the burrows to grab prey using those strong back legs. Again, I do hope, and then one of the reasons I keep showing these guys off is that I'm hoping at some point somebody gets them in, breeds them, pairs them, we get some slings in the hobby. I will be all over that to get some males to hopefully pair these guys at some point because this is a species that would easily be my number one choice as best quote unquote starter old world because you get, you know, an old world baboon species, but they are just so, for lack of a better term, calm and non responsive to when you open up their enclosures. The worst you'll get is they'll scurry away to their burrows rather slowly. But the E. Pacopus, easily one of my favorite spiders overall and a beautiful dwarf species. So before we finish this one up, a couple comments I want to make. Number one, I get asked a lot, you're into giant spiders, why would you get a dwarf? Doesn't that kind of defeat the purpose of having a big, bold spider? Well, hopefully what I proved here is that the dwarfs or the smaller species are actually quite cool. There are a lot of awesome species out there that don't get above four inches. So yes, a lot of us get into the hobby with the whole bigger is better thing, but eventually we come around to realizing, you know what, the small ones are cool too. Also, I got to point out that for some of us to have larger collections, we start to run out of space. If you're being responsible, you recognize that if you pick up, say, a little formictopus sling, sure, that sling may only be an inch now, but eventually you're going to need to house an eight or nine inch spider. Wherein, if you pick up a dwarf species, you have a smaller enclosure you have to worry about. So I know there's been times where I've kind of had some room in my collection. I could get one of this species or I could get a few dwarfs. So I've kind of leaned toward the dwarf. So that's something to keep in mind. Also, while we're talking about dwarfs, I want to point out four species that when I got into the hobby and started buying them up, I was told that they would be dwarfs. The first one is Orphanacus philippinus. There are folks out there that said these don't get any bigger than four inches. My two females were both five inches easily. There is some talk about there being another species that looks a lot like them in the Philippines that is smaller, but I've yet to see any evidence of that. Next one we have is Davis pentaloris. These guys are often sold as dwarfs. My girl just molted. Her molt was four and a quarter inches. She's probably about four and a half inches now. Again, that's just a smaller tarantula. Then we have Bumba Harita, which used to be Bumba Kaboka. God, I missed that name. But Bumba Harita, when I first picked them up, people were saying they're like three and three quarters inches, four inches. Nope, they get up to five inches. And then last but not least is one that I'm really disappointed with because I thought I had a girl, the C. Cyaneus. 
This species, I was told, was a dwarf, but my male matured out. And as you can see here, the leg span is well over four inches, prob probably close to four and a half inches. And I have to assume the females get even bigger. So those four species, not dwarfs, smaller tarantulas for folks looking for smaller ones. But again, I think we throw that dwarf moniker around a little too loosely in the hobby. We kind of need to come together and figure out, all right, what's a, what's a small, what's a medium, what's a large, and what's a dwarf? Just my two cents. Anyway, I would now love to hear what dwarfs have you raised up? What, what are their max sizes of the females? What do you got? Please chime in below. Let me know what are some of the dwarfs you have. What would you recommend? Because I know I'll be looking for new spiders down the road, and perhaps I'll pick up a couple new dwarfs. So that will do it for this one. As always, if you liked it enough to subscribe, very much appreciate it. Click the little circle up in there. I will put two other videos in here, probably best for viewer and something else. If you take the time to comment, I will take the time to respond. And I've been getting to them pretty quickly, but it can take me a couple days. Guys, stay safe. Catch you all next time.